Hello everyone, this is Omar Jan and welcome to Polycasm. We have a quick side quest to explore today. I wanted to show you guys a quick workflow you can try when it comes to creating a base in Blender to work with for a 2D illustration. I'm also going to talk about the importance of studying other artists' work and applying what you learned to your own work. This is something I regularly do in my own practice and I think it is one of the best ways to develop your skills and your artistic language. Okay, let's get started. I had a very rough idea for an illustration that I wanted to create, mostly to try some ideas that I picked up from looking at and studying a couple of other artists. The purpose was not to just copy what they're doing, but to try and understand their thought process and to figure out if there is anything that I can incorporate into my own workflow. So I made this super rough looking sketch to give myself some direction before jumping into Blender. Sometimes a sketch that loose and super rough is just enough, you know. You don't need to worry about making pretty looking sketches all the time. They are just supposed to be quick notes for yourself. I tend to sketch on regular copier paper with a pencil most of the time. And this helps me take away the pressure of creating something that looks good. In Blender, I grabbed a skull through the Sketchfab add-on and modified it a little bit. Next, I started using Bezier curves to get the base mesh for the cables. Or is it Bezier? I'm not sure. Bezier sounds very French, maybe it's Bezier. Let's go with Bezier. Bezier curves are great for creating things like this. It feels very intuitive to work with, and you can easily modify the mesh. I'm going to spend some time here to create a basic mesh that I can work with, but I don't have to zoom in and sculpt you know, all the tiny details or anything like that. It's supposed to be very rough, and I just want to get it as close to my original sketch as I can, and then I'm going to do most of the work in Photoshop. Once I'm happy with the result, I'm going to get a viewport render and drop that into Photoshop. Now, I'm going to very roughly draw over this to get the placement down. We won't be completely tracing over because I don't really like working that way. I made a video actually where I talk about this and why I prefer not to trace over. Everything I talked about in that video still applies here. So after I feel like I got the placement of my shapes down, I'm going to turn off the 3D render and start designing my drawing. I'm going to change the shapes and the proportions to get a design that I like. I'm exaggerating and simplifying to create clear contrasts and a good shape language, you know, all that stuff that I talked about in previous videos. I work the sketch as long as I need to to get a look that I'm happy with. The final sketch is similar to the 3D render, but it's not a complete traceover. This is why I turned off that drawing as soon as I can to let my imagination and my own vision take over. As I'm drawing my final line art, I'm going to continue making changes. But before we get into that, let's jump back into Blender. This part is pretty straightforward. I'm just setting a main light source and a rim light for my skull. When I get to the stage of adding lights into my scene in Photoshop, this render is going to be my reference. I used a spotlight for my main light source and for the rim light, it was a point light. Once I got something I like, I rendered the image out as normal and back to Photoshop we go. I'm going to start going over my sketch for the final line art. Now here, my first influence comes in. I've been looking at Konstantin Vavilov's work a lot recently and I really like this almost decorative style of line art he's doing in his drawings. So I decided to steal his idea and pass it off as my own right away. I mean, because this is the internet after all. Well, of course, not really. I wanted to study this, study what he's doing and try to understand it myself. I wanted to find out if there is anything I can take from this approach and apply it into my own work. So during the final line art process of my skull, I'll try and use a similar line art style to see if I can apply the knowledge that I picked up. I found this way of working to be very rewarding. There is a misconception when it comes to studying from other artists. Some people think you shouldn't do this because if you want to find your own style, you shouldn't be looking at others' work. I completely disagree with this way of thinking because 
your unique style is going to be a mixture of your own experiences and your influences. You cannot just, you know, shut it all out. You can't be just like, oh, I'm not going to let anybody's work influence me. The trick is to make sure you are not only looking at one or two artists and running into the risk of becoming a cheap copy of a well-known artist. Instead, keep an open mind and try to learn from a variety of sources. Even if you want to be a concept artist, your influences can range from photographers to abstract sculptors. The rule that I follow is try and learn from everyone, but follow no one. As I start laying down my base colors and lights, another artist's influence comes in. This time, it is the work of Gigi Cabenago. I grew up reading a lot of European comics, and they still influence my art to this day. I always look at what the French, Belgian, and Italian comics are doing. I ran into Gigi Cabenago's work for Dylan Dog, and I really loved his use of color. Especially this panel here really clicked with me, and I wanted to try and incorporate a similar use of bold color in this illustration. Again, I'm not trying to copy exactly what he's doing, but I'm trying to understand his thought process and apply it into my own art. When it comes to painting my lights, I'm referring back to the reference I created in Blender as much as I can, but I'm also not being a slave to it, you know, I'm changing it up as much as I need to. Christina suggested maybe I should write down like serial numbers on the cables or something like that. So I decided to experiment with some decals and see if anything works. I bought this pack on ArtStation Marketplace some time ago, and I find it quite useful to have a bunch of these ready to be dropped into whatever I'm working on. They can really add life to your concepts with very little work on your part. I'll leave the link for this decal pack in the description below. So if you are interested in buying this, make sure you check it out. After the decal experimentation, I wanted to add some random textures and noise to make this piece look less digital. Most of the time, digital artwork lacks the grit of something done with traditional means. I personally don't really like that very sterile and synthetic look digital art can have. Even applying a simple noise effect can help against this. In this case, I've also experimented with some textures I found online to make this look like an old, worn-out print. This part is really fun. You just drop in images and play around with the layer blend modes and image adjustments until you find something that looks cool. And here is the final artwork. I'm quite happy with how this came out. I got to play around in Blender, which is something I don't really do that often. I got to experiment and let a couple of other artists work influence me and learn some new things. My initial idea wasn't anything groundbreaking, but I decided to focus on the execution part this time around and see if I can learn something new. I hope I was able to give you guys an idea on how you can apply something you like from another artist's work into your own. And with that, we have completed another side quest. As usual, feel free to reach out to us with any questions you might have. Thanks for your time and we'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.